Hey guys, it's JP Gloria, and today we're going to look at the running form of the youngest man to have ever won at the European Championships, Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Today we are going to break down his running form as he won the 1500 meter race during these championships. He ran this race in a time of 3 minutes and 38 seconds. But his fastest time in this type of race is 3 minutes and 31 seconds. This is only about 5 seconds off of the official 1500 meter world record by Hisham El Grouj, which has not been broken in almost 20 years. Anyway, let's take a closer look at Jakob as he runs. As we always do, let's start at the feet. As the foot makes contact with the ground, it looks like he will be landing on the heels, but at the moment of impact, the foot quickly pulls closer to his body and he lands right around the mid to forefoot area. Landing around this region of the foot allows for Jakob to utilize the biomechanical properties of the foot for shock absorption and allow for smooth transition as the foot rolls over the ground. It's just a little part of the reason why he demonstrates quick, seamless transitions between foot contact on the ground to the flight phase of running. Actually, in this clip, he presents with very quick leg turnover with a cadence of about 210 steps per minute. However, what plays a larger role in allowing for smooth foot rollover is where the foot's position is in relation to the body. Now let's take a look at Jakob's foot positioning. As you can see, it lands just right in front of the hips. With this foot positioning during ground contact, he's landing pretty close to the body center of mass, maybe a little ahead of it. Obviously the forward lean of his whole body helps a bit as it shifts his center of mass slightly closer to where the foot lands. But the way he is landing is nowhere close to be considered overstriding which is when the foot lands way too far ahead of the body, causing a braking mechanism to occur, leading to wasted energy and decreased leg turnover. Next, let's take a look at the knees. Really, there's not much to see here that absolutely stands out compared to other elite runners. He presents with that slight knee bend, which allows for shock absorption. This is important, especially at the point where the foot makes initial contact with the ground, as there is a lot of force going through those legs during that moment. Now let's look at the hips. Again, not much unique things to see here, which is not a bad thing. You can continue to see how Jakob's form is kind of an embodiment of the current knowledge of how many coaches believe the body moves optimally during running. Looking at this side view, you can see he utilizes the full range of his hips. The common problem with many recreational runners is they don't extend their hips enough. Some of this comes from tightness from the hip flexors, usually due to sitting most of the day, or overemphasis on trying to improve their running cadence, and they end up not completing their stride just for the purpose of quickly getting their next step in. When this happens, you miss out on some force generation from the hips. As you can see from this frame, you can see how far those hips should ideally extend for that extra power. I'm going to stay on this frame as we talk about the trunk for one very minute thing that he could possibly change about his running. If you look closely, he presents with being slightly too upright at the trunk. Honestly, it's not even that bad, so fixing it might not even have an effect at all. However, I'll just briefly talk about the implications of having too upright of a trunk. When you are too upright, there is decreased engagement of the core. The core muscles are what allow you to stabilize the pelvis, so you can maximize the force generation coming from the legs. When the core is not engaged, excessive movement and instability at the pelvis can occur leading to wasted energy and decreased force production. However, in Jakob's case, his upright trunk is not exaggerated enough to where it causes problems, as you can see that he still maintains stability of the pelvis as he runs. Now let's take a look at a side view of his body. Now initially, it may look like his trunk is flexed. Just like we don't want too upright of a trunk, we don't want it too bent forward either. We try to find a balance in between. Instead of bending forward at the trunk, Yaka keeps his trunk upright and his whole body is actually tilted forward. This aids in forward momentum, utilizing hip flexors, and bringing his center of mass closer to where his foot lands resulting in improved speeds. Now in this view, let's take a closer look at the upper body. As you can see, there's really not much forward and backward movement, but rather there is rotational movement going on. Rotation of the trunk is opposite of rotation seen at the pelvis. This actually helps with leg swing, as well as counteract the rotational forces coming from leg muscle activation due to being opposing forces. Doing this effectively allows for improved ability to maintain a straight path and improve force application toward the desired direction. Now let's look at his arm movement. Jakob keeps his arms high and close, and if you notice, his hands barely cross midline. 
Similar to what I mentioned about trunk rotation, the arm movement also aids in counteracting the rotational forces from the legs to maximize force in the forward direction. Now, looking at the head, he keeps his head slightly tucked as he runs. Looking at the side view, you can see it doesn't go back and forth much at all either. Keeping his head in this position aids in core engagement. Now, even though it's slightly stabilized, it's not completely stiff to where there's no movement going on at all. As you can see in this front clip, you can see most of the movement is actually happening side to side, and this is due to the weight shifting occurring as each foot makes contact with the ground. And that's it for the quick analysis on Jakob Ingebrigtsen's running form. I'm super curious how his form may evolve as he gets stronger and faster. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you still continue to watch my content, I'm always super grateful. If you have just recently heard about my content and aren't following me yet, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button. And as always, thank you for watching.